Hi everyone, Leah here from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with a fun project video for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to go check out the rest of our channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you'll always know when we're posting new content. Today's video is a sparkly little earring that would be perfect for the understated bride or just anyone who wants some simple and lovely but versatile dazzle on their ears. The techniques I'm going to cover are how to wrap a basic loop, how to decide placement of the crystals on the earring, and how to use a finished chain to create this project, and some ideas for how to use the rest of that chain afterwards. And just of note, if you want to see how to wire wrap a loop in more granular detail, we have other videos on our channel that will show you this wire wrapping technique broken down much, much more if you need it. So first, let's take a look at what I will be using. We have here basically what I need for a half of the earring, because I already have the other half created. Lovely, super sparkly. So this is what we need for the other half of the pair. So I have my ear wire, of course. I have 10 one inch sterling silver head pins in 26 gauge. I have 10 four millimeter Swarovski crystal bicones and the color I'm using, which I absolutely love for brides is white alabaster AB satin. And the reason that I love this color, and I'm hoping that we can pick it up in the video as lovely as it is in person is that Imagine white, but then you have this subtle satiny finish on it that goes a little bit taupey, and then you also have a blushy pink on there as well. And of course, anyone in the bridal industry knows how hot blush is for brides who want something other than bright white. So this really is a stunning color. It's very subtle, but it does have a little bit of iridescence, and it's really a beautiful understated choice to add a little bit of sparkle to whatever you're making. And the last thing I have here is a sterling silver chain. So this is a finished chain. So it has the clasp already on it. And the neat thing about using finished chains for these types of projects is first of all, you're going to get a clasp that you can use later. You're going to get the chain you need for this project. And you can easily utilize the rest of the chain if you want to keep the clasp in there too for a necklace. So to give you a better understanding of that, this first half of the earring that I created has crystals coming off of a piece of chain. What I did to start is I cut my chain in the very middle and one side is what I used to build my earring. And this chain will even out because I'll use the other side, which is still a little bit longer to build the other earring. And I'll be left with this broken chain with a cut in the middle and a clasp attached. And what you can do, and it's one of my favorite things to do with the rest of chain when I've done a project like this, is you can go ahead and if you do basic stringing, you can go ahead and crimp you have some soft flex with a crimp bead onto the end loop of where the chain was broken or where you had cut the chain. You can string on some lovely beads or lovely crystals or anything you want, especially to match the earrings that you just made. And then you simply crimp to the other side. This is also a great way to add some additional length to a chain if that's what you are in need of. So to get started, we need to determine, first of all, which side is the longer side? Because that's the side we're going to be using. And we can see that that is this side right here. So I'm going to keep that handy so I know which side I have to use. And when I'm doing a lot of wire wrapping with head pins and crystals or head pins and any kind of beads, I like to try to make it as efficient as possible by making it as much of a production line as I can. So what I mean by that is I'm going to take every single one of my head pins and I'm going to thread a crystal onto each head pin. And then the next step that I'll do to those head pins will be the start of our wire working. And I'm going to do the same simple step on all of the head pins. Then I'll move to the next step and I'll perform that step on all of the head pins. It's a way that you can shave time off of a project because it means that your hands are changing tools far, far less. And you're able to really streamline what you're doing because you can get into much more of a rhythm rather than constantly making changes to the step, the technique, the tool. So I've got almost all of them on here. And again, these are just little four millimeter bicone crystals. And I have one inch sterling silver, 26 gauge head pins. And I really like using sterling silver for a project like this because this is something where you're thinking of marketing your jewelry towards brides. Um, I think to offer them sterling silver for their, their very special day is something that's really, really nice to do. So, um, and another thing is that sterling silver is sometimes much more easier to work with. So for this type of wrapping that we're going to be doing, it's a lot easier to do it on a head pin that's sterling silver versus doing it on 
a base metal or a plated head pin, which tends to be a lot harder to work with. So you're going to have uh, maybe a slight increase in price, but you're going to have it go a lot faster. So you're going to save time and you're going to save your little fingertips from, from getting sore. So definitely it balances out for sure. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do step one of our wire wrap loop, which is to take our chain nose pliers here. Your chain nose pliers are flat inside and they taper to a point. And we're going to grab the wire right above the crystal and so close that your, your pliers are touching the bicone. And then we're gonna bend our wire into a 90 degree angle, or almost a 90 degree angle. As long as it's pretty close, that's, that's sufficient. Now I'm gonna do this step on every single one of my head pins before I keep going, but I'm gonna show you the next step just for the sake of the video. But I would normally make this bend on every single one of those other nine head pins. Now the next step that I would do on every single head pin is to take my round nose pliers and if you're not familiar with round nose pliers they're like two little ice cream cones there's no flat edges there and all we're going to do is grab the corner of where we're working right at that wire and depending on how far you hold it into your pliers determines how big your loop is going to be these are just short little head pins and it's a dainty earring so we don't want a loop that's too big so we're going to keep it not quite at the very tip of the pliers but just a smidgen in, you can see where I have it there. And all we're gonna do is take this wire and we're gonna bend it around the pliers to start to create a loop. And now we're gonna have to shift this part of the pliers out of the way so that way we can continue our loop. So we're just gonna open it up and shift them over. And then bring this the rest of the way around. So what we eventually end up with is that same 90 degree angle that we started with, but we just have a loop up in the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and do these two steps on all of my other head pins, and I will see you back here in a minute. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done those first two steps on all 10 of my little head pins here. And I need to go to that end of the chain, the one that I determined was the slightly longer side. And I'm going to go ahead and take my head pin here and I'm going to thread it through that end link of chain. Just like this and then you slide it like a key onto a key ring right into that loop. You can see how the bead is going to hang off the bottom. So now we need to go ahead and wrap this little tail shut so that way our loop is nice and secure. And for that we're going to go back to our chain nose pliers because a good trick to remember is that if you've made your round shape you're done with your round pliers. Sometimes people may try to cheat and go in and hold the loop with their round nose pliers because sometimes they can be a little bit more narrow, but the problem there is that because there's no flat edge, you will actually create a dent in your wire and you certainly don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna carefully get in there with my chain nose and I'm careful to grab only the loop and not the actual link of chain that's hanging off the loop because if I do squish that accidentally, um, I'll damage it and it could break. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this little tail around that little space that we have left here, that little bit of wiggle room. And it's gonna take about three wraps and you're gonna to wanna to maintain a nice 90 degree angle as you wrap. And that's what will give you nice clean wraps. And because this is sterling silver, uh, these head pins, I mean, um, they're of a hardness that's called half hard, which is perfect for doing little wrap loops because you can basically just push the wire and it's gonna wrap nice and tightly into place. You may see um, things that are called dead soft for sterling silver wire, and that's not what you want. That's gonna be a lot harder to work with for the technique that we're using here. So these really are ideal. Now we're gonna use our cutter and we're gonna trim off that little bit of wire that's left behind. And then lastly, we're going to go back to our chain nose pliers. And again, if you're not sure what pliers to use, we made that round shape. We're done with the round pliers. We're still using the chain nose for everything else. And we're going to go in and tuck in that little, little bit that's oftentimes left behind. Because no matter how close you trim it, they will always be a little tiny, sharp little tail. So we want to just nudge that in because the last thing we want is for this to scratch anyone or get caught in hair or get caught on clothing like a scarf or something like that. So now to do the next bead, I'm simply going to do the same exact thing, only I'm going to thread this head pin through the link of chain right above the last one. Easy, easy. And we're going to do the same steps. 
We're going to grab with our chain nose pliers and grab that loop from the outside, sandwich it flat in between your pliers, wrap your wire carefully. One wrap nicely sitting after the other. If you start to see overlap or a gap appear, simply stop and you can easily correct it at that time. It's harder to correct things like that if you keep wrapping and then you try to fix it later. So just keep an eye on, on how it's looking as you're wrapping it. Tuck in that little sharp edge that's left. And that's our second bead. Now I'm going to show you a, a couple more beads because it's important to see, not so much because of the repetitive nature of the wire wrapping technique, but more so because of the placement of the crystals on the chain. Because one thing you may notice in the original, let me give you guys another little close up here. Our crystals actually spiral around the chain. So each link that they go up, sits one link higher and then on the opposite side and then around. So it could be on the left side of the bottom link or rather the bottom of the bottom link, the left side of the next link, the back of the next link after that, and then the right side and then the front and then the left and then the back. So it kind of spirals up like a spiral staircase. And that's what we want to see. And that's going to be a really great way to evenly distribute your crystals. You can certainly avoid that technique and just eyeball it and come out with an absolutely beautiful result. But this is a way to make it a little bit more effortless, which I think we're all looking for when it comes to design work. So I'm going to take my next crystal. I'm going to take a look at that chain there and I want to find the link. That is the next empty link up. So the link above the last one I used. And I want to go on either the front or the back of it. Right now, because I only have two crystals there, it doesn't matter. But whether I go on the front or the back determines the start of that spiral. And you'll see what I mean as you're doing it. So we're just going to get through that link. We're going to wire wrap it shut. Give yourself those three nice, good little twist. If you start to get a space, like I said, or an overlap, you can correct it while you're doing it much easier than afterwards. So until you're used to the technique a little bit more, don't be afraid to go a little on the slower side. Okay. So now, now our spiral is started. So now it's very important if we want to continue that spiral to pick the right side of the next link. And I, by that, I mean the correct side of the next link. So we're going to take a look at the spiral that we have. And I can see that that has to be on this side right here. And I know it's probably difficult to see because this chain is so, so, so tiny, but you will definitely see it as you're creating it. You're going to see that spiral begin. And at the end of the day, if you find that part tricky, you can just place them wherever you like and you can just eyeball it. But again, your, your crystals are going to be wired onto the left side of one link and then the back of the next link and then the right side of the next link and then the front of the link after that. So you'll see that it creates that spiral as you keep going around. So what I'm going to do is continue to get my crystals wired on and I will see you back here in a minute to finish up. Okay, I've gone ahead and wired all of my little crystals on there and you can see they look pretty evenly distributed. Let me give you a good little view. Pretty evenly distributed all the way around. And that's what you'll get if you do that little spiral technique. There we go. That's a nice little shot. Each one just has crystal sticking out in either direction at each, practically at each tier. Nice even coverage. So to get this attached to our ear wires, what we're going to do is we want to have our ear wires thread through the first empty link above the last one that we used, which means you have to cut the one above that. So look for the second link up that's empty, and that's the one that you're going to cut. I'm just going to make sure you're grabbing all that link and that link only, because it can be easy to grab more than one and snip accidentally more than you meant to. And when you pull that off, we're going to be able to go ahead and thread our ear wire through there. So I'm just going to go to that loop and I'm going to swivel that loop open to the side, just like that. And I'm going to find that empty link and thread it right through. And Sometimes if it's hard and it keeps wanting to camouflage itself among your other, other components here, I like to grab it with my chain nose pliers just so it sits it's up. You can see that I'm able to grab it there and I can then more easily go ahead and thread 
my ear wire onto it, just like that. Now we of course have to make sure that we shut that ear wire loop by swiveling it back shut. And you have this beautiful little earring. Of course we have our nice little pair, let's get the pair up there. And again, I love this color because it's beautiful for a bride who wants something understated or something blushy, something a little bit more vintagey looking, or if, they're, if there's antique sort of elements in their wedding, um, like antique lace, I think this, this kind of a color really fits in beautifully. And it's just a lovely, simple, sparkly style. And it's something that you can play up or play down with other accessories that you pair it with. Or even if you're not a bride and you're just someone who loves this pair of earrings, it's a nice, versatile, everyday earring if you're someone who likes a little bit of sparkle in their accessories. So that's it for now, folks. Thanks for watching. Make sure to visit us on over at EurekaCrystalBeads.com for everything that I used in this video, as well as all of your other beading and jewelry needs. Bye.